Hey. Well, hello, guys. We um, decided to go to Stillwater, play Oklahoma State, have a ton of respect for Coach Gundy. I mean, going into 20 years now at uh, Oklahoma State University and just has done a phenomenal job. I have a lot of respect for him and the way he handles his program. Uh, 17 to 18 returning starters um, played really well. Uh, Saturday, um, offensively have a ton of skill, um, really good at the skill spot, you know, starting with the quarterback Bowman and then Ollie Gordon is certainly as good as any running back in the country, uh, wide receiver wise, um, you know, it starts with Brandon Presley. They love to get the ball to him. Uh, he's a, fantastic returner as well and then uh, I like the Stribling kid they got out of Washington State uh, he's done a really good job at wide out and they already had Owens and and uh, then they have their entire offensive line coming back who's really playing well together so um, you know they went to the Big 12 championship game last year and and uh, and look to be uh, headed North on on that as well uh, this year. Defensively, they have some outstanding players over there as well, starting with Colin Oven, Oliver and Nicholas Martin. Those two guys are, are game changers. Uh, you know, I really like their D-line. Uh, Colin Clay, obviously, he was here for, for I think, a year. Um, uh, Putnam City, I believe, uh, young man, but uh, he's playing extremely well. And then I like Cody uh, Walter Shield, just a big physical defensive end. And they've got Kendall Daniels, who's their Sam, who's who I think he was second on their team in tackles last year behind Martin. And then Trey Rutker, I just he's he's a tackling machine. When, what we saw off of film is that they tackle extremely well. They play hard. They're sound. Um, just a well, well coached football team. And then you go to specialists, and they have you know a left footed punter, a right footed punter. Uh, uh, they can rugby. Uh, their kicker. Uh, Ward made a 52-yarder last week and uh, have two dynamic returners in Presley and Freeman. I think Freeman transferred over from Oklahoma. But uh, just a really solid football team. I know we're going to have to deal with uh, a tight sideline and a, a, a very loud crowd. Uh, that's why all our kids uh, came to – play at Arkansas and any SEC is uh, for games like this. And we're really excited about it. Sam, have you had anybody simulate Ollie Gordon and in a week like this in the season, how much physical work can you do to, to get ready to tackle this guy? Well, our tackling is something uh, that we, we needed to get better just from uh, our Thursday night game. Uh, so, uh, certainly on Saturday we had a tackling circuit so that we were trying to address that. Um, you know, if they get him two or three yards, he's going to get six or seven That's or more. Um, so, uh, but we're going to have to tackle him one-on-one, -on -one, but we're going to have to get a lot of guys around the ball. Uh, so we're, st we're definitely understand how good he is. And, uh, the other thing, too, is they have some dynamic skill that are difficult to get on the ground as well. So our tackling is going to have to be better. We're making a big emphasis on that this week. Coach, Kyle Ramsey kicked the PATs down there the other night. Is he probably going to be your, for right now, your field goal kicker and PAT going forward? Yes. I mean, there's still a battle there, but uh, he'll be the first one running out there. Yeah. And then – Three years ago when you won nine games, you, you didn't score in the second half against UAPB, and they also didn't shut them out. So how encouraging was it to score each time you had the ball, especially in the second half there? Because, like I said, two, three years ago you didn't score in the second half. How encouraging was that the other night? Well, I think this, too. I think there's some things there. Um, it was a different timing, too. In other words, I think the UAPB game was right before a bye week. And so I think we'd gotten up 45 to nothing, if I'm correct. And we just played the twos the entire game and, and, 
as you saw, the results weren't the same, you know, three years ago or what, yeah, three years ago now than what it was the other night. Uh, we certainly went to 10 minute quarters, um, you know, um, and, but it's the first game of the year. So we were going to run our, that was the plan. If, if we were fortunate enough to get ahead, we were going to run our offense and let these kids see what Malachi could do. If it got to KJ, see what the threes could do. And uh, so I know the score got a little out of hand, but at the same time, we, we had to worry about our team more than we did anybody else. And for us to go down and score that many times and shut them out with, with our threes on defense as well, I thought that was a really good sign for us. I'm curious if you watched the uh, Oklahoma State South Dakota State game live, or if you just you know watch the cutups later. Both, yeah. Any benefit? You don't get an all opportunities to watch games, I guess, during the season. Is there any benefit to watching a game as it unfolds versus already kind of knowing what happens? Yeah, well, it was more uh, about getting the benefit of the atmosphere and the juice of their team and and how they play off their crowd and and uh, the speed. You know, watching watching games live, you can you know they came out and they went fast pace. You know, early you don't uh, necessarily as you're watching cutups get that feel, and uh, so we certainly have to be ready for their fast pace offense. They don't run it all the time, but uh, we have to be ready for that. He opened the game with it. Uh, Coach Gundy did last last week. So, yeah, I think there are benefits. You know, certainly you can hear calls and different things that you can't hear on on cutups, but I think you just get a, a live feel of it watching. And, and like you say, you don't get a lot of that. Now, sometimes you do maybe on the plane coming back or, or the bus coming back, maybe if your your opponent's playing later than you did. But not very often do you get to just sit down and just watch a game. And and uh, as I'm watching, I, I go, man, they got a really good team. They like to throw that deep fade uh, a lot. Gunny's always done that, yeah. um, but they're hitting you with Ollie Gordon and then they, they do that. How often can you expect to see that? And just what a, a challenge that is. If, and, you know, if you press them, they're going to test you. I mean, that's just what's going to happen. If they, if you press them up, you're, you're going to get tested deep. Um, you know, they have so many uh, things they can do, you know, with the RPO, with, with handing it off to Gordon, um, and then their bubble, their bubble game, their screen game is is a big part of what they they didn't do it as much Saturday as what I think they you know they well what I know they've done in the past. But um, if you press them, they're gonna go deep on you. If you don't, they're you're gonna have the bubble or hand the ball off. You know, because normally you're in a in a box that's number wise is gonna give them ad, advantage uh, handing the ball off to Gordon. Do you have any health updates on Andrew Armstrong and Patrick Kudis? Uh, Andrew, I'll say, is questionable. Uh, Kudis is probably doubtful. Did he get that scan last week? He did, yeah. Um, and then uh, we didn't see Miguel Mitchell and haven't seen him on the depth chart. Just what's his status? He's just out for right now. Oh. Uh in recent years, Arkansas has, on these marquee matchups, have gone on the road first. And in 14, you guys went down to Texas Tech and won, and your team went to BYU first and won. Is there something about maybe having more eyes on you or just something that plays into how, why you've done well on the road in these marquee games? Man, I, I, I don't know. I You know, we uh, – a lot of times you get your team on the road, you you – you get them together, it's just y'all versus everybody. You know, that feeling at times, if you have a real close team, can make you play a little bit better. Um, you don't have the the uh, distractions of as many tickets and all that kind of stuff. So I don't really know um, the answer to that. Um uh, I think we'll be ready to play uh, Oklahoma State. I know they will us, but I think I think it's going to be a really, really good game. But I really don't know the answer to your question. Can you assess what you thought of the run blocking and then just the run game in total? And uh, would, would Dominion go up on the depth chart if he's fully healthy? Well, he has the opportunity to. You know, I really like Rodney Hill uh, as our as our two running back right now. 
um, our dove would certainly have an opportunity to, to continue to move up uh, the chart when he gets healthy. Um, and you had another part. What was the first part? In the run game. Yeah, I thought we blocked. The the one thing that I thought uh, we didn't have many mistakes, assignment mistakes. And once we can do that, you know, uh, and I, I think it goes back to what I want to say about Oklahoma State. You're going to have to beat them because they've got a lot of starters coming back. They're not going to make mistakes. They're, they're not. They're going to play sound football hard and uh, physical. And so you're going to have to – you're to win. You're going to have to physically uh, go out and try to try to uh, be more physical than they are because they're they're a well well um, coached football team. I thought we looked that way uh, as far as uh, Thursday night. I thought we looked like a well coached football team, and uh, we had limited mistakes, and that's that. Therefore, we can play pretty good up front if we do that. How close do guys like Colin Oliver and Landon Jackson compare to each other? Uh, two two totally different guys. Um, Oliver is is uh, uh, smaller, quicker. Um, now they both can rush the passer. Um, they do more with Oliver than than we do with Landon. You know, they drop him into coverage. Uh, they move him around uh, in their odd package. He'll be inside, outside. They do some things there more than than uh, what we do with Landon. But I will say the the common thing they have is ability to get to the quarterback. They play both play extremely hard and uh, physical football players. You look at them a receiver. I mean, you've already mentioned they've got size, that they've got speed. How do you go about simulating that during the week, and how do you feel like you match up with what they've got at receiver? Well, during the week, we always go good on good at receiver. In other words, uh, our seven on seven, uh, they will get uh, four days of of good on good. Um, so back in the old days of seven on seven versus scouts, we don't do it anymore. So. Um, our look team, our look team is our ones and twos. Uh, so that simulation will be there. Um, and we have some big receivers, some, you know, like, like their Presley, it was probably our Satagna, you know, and, and then, uh, they've got the big receivers and we do too. So I think we can simulate that pretty good at practice. You know, Sam, even with, with the COVID year and everything, you don't see too many seventh year quarterbacks, and he's on his third college, so he's kind of the poster boy, I guess, for the Portland NIL and everything. As far as Bowman, what, what, what do you say? I think he's. I think I read he's had thirty starts. He can. Their offense fits him perfectly, in my opinion. I mean, he can. Um, they don't run him quite as much. He's sneaky, you know. They ran him in a draw the other day, and he made a, a good yardage on that, but. Um, you know, he what they're asking him to do, he can do it and do it well and uh, gets the ball out extremely fast. It's hard to get to him, hard to sack him, um, A, because they're good at protection, but B, because he gets rid of the ball. Um, but with that bubble, goes, uh, RPOs, he's really good at that. He, I think he probably knows their offense as good as anybody does, but uh, – as good as the head coach does, uh, you know. So he's a really good player, and uh, what they do with him is right down his um, wheelhouse and really playing well, takes care of the football. You know, R Ramsey was hurt and had that rough scrimmage. Um, what, 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 what did he do the last couple of weeks, I guess, to, to win the job? Ramsey. Um, well, we set him for five days. He was hurt, and so we set him for five days. And then, uh, uh, really, we just weren't kicking quite as well as we'd like to. Uh, and uh, when he came back, he was he was uh, pretty solid in there. It was just a decide who we're going to go with type deal. It wasn't really cut and dry. And uh, it's his job and, until. Uh, we figure something out differently. Hopefully, I don't. Hopefully, we he makes them all and we can keep going. But we have full trust in him and Shipley. You said the other day that you talk about the deal with Stein, which you know I know it's not he's not the quarterback or whatever, but just wondering what 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 happened with him. Well, I don't. I'm. I'm. I don't think he. Um, let's see. 
uh, depth chart came out and, and he had lost half of his starting role. One was long snapper and the other one was short snapper. And, and, uh, I don't, I just don't feel like he probably wanted to, uh, uh, just be one or the other. And so, uh, he decided to leave the team. Coach, what about the environment at Boone Pickens Stadium? You mentioned looking forward to it and tight sidelines. What's your familiarity level like with that? Uh, we that, went that in there and got beat when I was at OU. Uh, very, very loud, uh, very, very close, as in they can stand up and look right on top of you. And we've talked to our coaching staff and our players about that well because we can't let their fans be a distraction to us when we're trying to learn on the sidelines, trying to talk about the next series, whatever it may be. Um, but it's it's extremely close. I think it's the closest one in the country and uh, extremely loud. I think they have 55,000, but it's a loud stadium. Uh, so we've talked about that. And crowd noise will be a huge part of this week's preparation, and we started that on Saturday. How do you feel about Taylor Green going to the game? He obviously had a, a pretty impressive opener. Oh, I, I I think he's a really good player, and I'm excited to see him play on a on what might be considered a bigger stage. I think it's ABC, and um, excited to see him get out there along with his teammates and play. I think he'll I think he'll be great. Hey, coach, you've talked a lot about their experience. Obviously, their offensive line's got two hundred something starts yeah. throughout the two deep. Just what have you seen from them, and what kind of challenge do they present? Well, they have a really good coach too. I mean, I like their coach, and and uh, um, they play well together, and they're playing seven seven guys. I mean, they they got a couple tackles in the portal that that are giving them some depth, and possibly start you know possibly might start for them, um, but they just. Again, it's kind of what they do that they they do very, very well. And you just don't see mistakes. Uh, but they are a very physical uh, group. Uh, movement doesn't seem to bother them, you know, which it would an uh, inexperienced line or an exper inexperienced player next to an experienced guy. But these guys have been playing together for a long time, and I think they have a lot of confidence in them. They should because they're really good players. So, um, again, I think this game, more than surprising somebody or a schematics, I think this is going to be a – you're going to have to go whip somebody and, and – uh, uh, physically to win. So I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of mistakes. I just think there's going to be a slobber knocker a little bit. And then you said all the technology stuff went smoothly on Thursday. You feel good about that heading into a 55,000 hospital environment? Yeah, it really did. And I think our coaches really enjoyed the – the iPads, the uh, the watching the game. I know Bobby and the, those guys back there. Uh, you know, I, we obviously we talked about it on Friday, uh, how much usage we got out of it. And I think uh, both both the uh, both the uh, helmet communication and the iPad watching the video went uh, super well for us, te technically as well as us getting information to our kids through it. I think the only time you and Gundy would have overlapped in the Big 12 together was when you were at Kansas, but I don't think you guys played. You ever cross paths with him, um, play any games against Oklahoma State when you were coaching or any, anybody on their staff? Man, I I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I always get a kick out of uh, listening to Coach Gundy's press conferences, you know, because he's blunt and to the point, and he is who he is. So I have a lot of respect for for that. And he catches a little heat for it. No, I don't think he much cares. You know, I think he just who is it who he is. So I, I've always had respect for him as a man. But then you go and and you watch his teams play, and they're always prepared and they play hard as hell. You know, and a lot of fun to watch. You ever had any kind of conversation or anything? Uh, not that I can remember that had any, mm -hmm. you know, I, I know his brother Kale as well. You know, I know his brother Kale. So anything, uh, from watching, uh, the film, um, that jumped out to you that maybe you didn't see during the game that I don't know, maybe a guy helped him help himself or playing time. Maybe a little bit more on special teams. Alex Sanford played really well. Dallas Young made a great play, uh, on a special team. Uh, yeah. Larry Worth, I 
excuse me, uh, um, um, Dix, uh, Worth, but St Stephen Dix, he played better than what I th maybe even I thought he might. You know, I'm talking about in space. Uh, made some good tackles out there, but um, you know we played so many guys. I I wasn't really disappointed in in any anybody. We probably got about what I thought we would out of out of the guys. My biggest thing was we cut we re skill wise we really did a good job of catching the football. You know I know we dropped one or two here or there, but uh, some fantastic catches as well. You guys didn't play extremely well at home last year, but on the road, you're really tough out. What what was it about taking it on the road, and, and how do you kind of keep that going? Man, I don't know. Uh, I really don't um, what the difference was. You know, sometimes going on the road depends on who you're playing and all that. But, I mean, you talk about last year, you know, we went to LSU, went to Alabama, went to Ole Miss, and uh, very – strong environments and and uh and then we come home and uh we didn't we didn't play um seemed like sometimes with the same energy that we had on the road so i really don't know i hope we 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 continue to play well on the road and then figure it out when we get back home you know part of it is um we you know i think we went five in a row or five out of six on a road or something like that last year. And, and, uh, you'd like to be that as when the season starts, you'd like to be opposite of that. You'd like to play in here a whole bunch like most other teams do, but our schedule just hasn't permitted us to do that. We need to go get a win on Saturday and come back in here. I, I imagine our place would be rocking pretty good. I was going to ask you about your safety play the other night. Uh, how would you like the way the rotation shook out? And then how important are, are the safeties in this game? Very important, you know, because they're going to have to make some tackles as well, but they're going to have to play fast defense, you know. So it's, uh, uh, again, their skill is is really, really good, and they, they cause you problems in a lot of spots. Um, I like T.J. Metcalf. I think he's just continuing to get better. Uh, Jaden Johnson, I felt like he played well. Um, the rotation there, Slaughter, Slaughter's a guy we can certainly count on, a good player. And then HUD, HUD can play several spots there. Um, but I was, I was pleased with our, our safeties. Um, but I think if there's a guy sticking out right now, it's Matt Cass. Okay. And then the cornerbacks, you got, I think you played at least five. Yeah. And did, did anybody earn more playing time or were they all? About like you thought. I don't know that we're changing what where we were. I think you know, obviously, um, Stewart um, is a, in a battle there with Cuddy, and and uh, but uh, you know, Snoop played um, with the threes when we, when we got in there, and he had a nice man to man coverage there on on a post route. Uh, I don't know. I think we feel better, you know, about corner with Singletary or yeah, Singletary and and uh, so we'll see. But I, I imagine we'll start the same guys we did last week. I do. I do like our depth there, though. Sam, Arkansas and Oklahoma State play play East play a lot. Hadn't played since 1980. Looking at the series, I'm guessing it's because Oklahoma State got tired of coming to Little Rock. Not, don't really know. Got to investigate that, I guess. But with you guys, the campuses being so close, do you, are you do you think this, this is a good uh, little home and home for you all? Yeah, I think any time that you play close, I think you'll you'll you can potentially have a better game. You know, um, kids know each other on the team. A lot of times when you're when you're uh, playing closer, I don't know if this is a rivalry because we haven't played them. So, but when you're playing closer competition, certainly if you've got have to grow on the road, it's a lot better to go, you know, down to Stillwater than it is to Oregon. You know, um, but uh, there's there'll be some familiar guys on both sides. They'll the kids will know each other. Um, and, you know, the closer you can stay with uh, away games is always a little bit better just because of travel and the time you get home. We know Travis was on the sidelines, which was different than last year. Um, what, what what led to that? How do you think it worked? 
Well, he asked if he could go down there, you know, and I, with the with the new technology, and he can see what's going on, and I think he's more comfortable with, you know, he's got good energy, you know, so I think he wanted to bring that on the sidelines, and and obviously, it was just one game and all that, but it all worked out well, and I think he's going to do the same uh, this weekend as well. And one more, you know, the offensive line very dominant last week. I mean, everybody was pretty dominant, but now a bigger task against Oklahoma State. What do you expect them from the offensive line? And if they could have a really good game uh, after you know the struggles of last year, how how big would that be in, in, in boosting confidence? Yeah, I just, I mean, there's there was four of the five that you know out there on the field that were playing last year or that played. Thursday night that didn't play for us last year. So I don't know that it's a, it's not the same old line, even the same personnel, to be honest with you. Um, the game Thursday, you really can't, there's really not a lot you can put into the results of that because um, um, we're not going to, you know, no disrespect, we're not going to play anybody like that, you know, the rest of the year. But only thing you can do is you did we play hard? Did we play smart? And uh, did we play physical? And uh, did we want to score every time? Did we want to shut them out? And so that's the results you got from it. You know, um, did we the smart part of it, did we have a lot of MAs? We did not up front. We didn't have really pressure problems, but they didn't pressure us either. We're going to get pressured Saturday. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. They're going to see if we can protect. Um, but for what the game was, um, I thought we played smart and we played physical, and that's the expectation uh, when we go into Stillwater. I, I like our line. We haven't been tested. We'll find out a lot more about them on Saturday. Go were already up quite handily when it happened, but just how do you think Taylor looked in the two minute, especially in that final drive? Yeah, I really wanted to get to that. You know, I was talking to Bobby and I said, Hey, it was second down. I think they were but they had they had a timeout left. So I didn't think it would hurt us to use a timeout. So they ran the ball on second down. I called timeout, which made them decide whether they were going to continue to try to uh just run out the clock. Uh, give us less time or uh, try to get the third nine. They did, and it was incomplete. And uh, uh, I wanted to get to that two minute because I felt like Taylor would be done at the you know end of the drive, regardless of whether we scored or not. And I thought he really handled himself well, especially after we got the penalty to come back, and then we continued to go down and and score. Um, but I wanted to get that in for me and for them and uh, and for Bobby to try to get that communication. And it worked out well. I thought he handled it well. And I, I was real pleased after we after we, we overcame the penalty and, and went down and scored. Appreciate it. All right, guys.